and welcome back to our channel. All of this time in lockdown has got us reminiscing on the good times from the places that we've traveled in the past and we've been to quite a few countries together mm -hmm. and it was before we started recording YouTube but we've always done little videos for our family so that was the thing that inspired us to actually start a YouTube channel in the first place to mm -hmm. actually like make it more formal and share it with more people. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much of Australian news has been going out to the world but as soon as the pandemic came along Australia locked down the borders hard and fast and that was March last year, right? Yep, yep, March 2020. And by the time that we're allowed to travel overseas again, it, with the exception of New Zealand, we've been allowed to travel to New Zealand mm. in travel bubbles, but they come and go and get taken yeah. away again. And They're gone at the moment. You can't really plan anything with any certainty. It'll be like nearly two years by the time we can actually get overseas again. Mm -hmm. So we are ready and raring to go as soon as we can. In the meantime, we're going to take you back through some of the places that we've been in the past. So this first one will feature Dana's first trip overseas which was New Zealand 2017 plus a Europe trip. So let's get into it. Country number one is obviously Australia, the country where we were both born and have traveled around extensively, especially on our YouTube channel up to this point. You have to count that because you can never travel to all the countries in the world if you don't include the one that you were born in, right? But moving on to the more exciting stuff. Country number two, our first time overseas together, not our first yes. time, Dana's first time overseas, January 2017. So North Island, New Zealand, Wellington. We stayed in a lovely high rise apartment. It was our first time airbnb together. Yeah, yeah, and it was a great, it was a great experience. Done it many times since. And we experienced our first earthquake while we were there as well. Yeah, in the high rise. There's not many high rises in Wellington, but we uh, Airbnb'd one and experienced an earthquake from the 12th floor, 14th, something like that. <laughs> it got a bit of a rock up up there. And we actually went for a wedding in Wellington. It was our friend's wedding. And for the rest of that trip, we just explored Wellington and started started our love for the city. Uh, one of the highlights actually was going to the Great War Museum that was actually organized by the friend who was having the wedding's dad in conjunction with Peter Jackson, who is the director of Lord of the Rings, and saw all of the cool little figurines. There's actually a little Peter Jackson one, a little model of him buried deep in one of the displays, which yeah, you, is pretty cool You to probably find. wouldn't find it if you uh, weren't told exactly where to look. Yeah, but that was pretty cool. And then that same year, 2017, we went back again to New Zealand in For August. For a snow trip. Mount Ruapehu. Yes. And we skied both of the mountains there, Taroa and Whakapapa. That's the one. Uh, in the Māori language, a WH at the start of a word sounds like an F. So it looks like Whakapapa, but it's Whakapapa. On that trip, we were with the same person who got married and another friend. Mm. And we went around the south of the North Island of New Zealand. We went to Taupo. Yeah, Taupo, which is on the lake. Yeah, lake. there's a big lake there. We saw the craters of the moon oh. with all of the... Uh, what's the it bubbling called? up. The the thermal the steam coming out. <laughs> that Sm was pretty cool. The smelly steam. It's it's good though. It's great. I couldn't believe that was it was a thing you could visit. Ah, oh, I want to go back there for sure. There was a little track walking through all of it. Oh, it was like being on the moon. It was. It's called Craters of the Moon. So. Yeah. We also went across to Napier in wine country. Saw Ma the Black Beach. Yeah. Black mm -hmm. sand beaches, which is our first time seeing those, and maybe our only time so far. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then we went back into Wellington, checked out some of the Lord of the Rings filming locations, like mm -hmm. at the top of Mount. Mount Victoria, is that the mountain in Wellington? Yeah, memory? yeah, yeah. There's definitely, you can definitely recognize Frodo on a trail in, in that area. Hiding from ring wraiths. The trees look very ominous, dangerous. <laughs> we also went to where they, uh, Rivendell. Yeah, and had a look around where they filmed all the, the elf scenes for Lord of the Rings as well. Right before we got on the plane, we went for a long walk, longer than we expected, to find the seals at Red Rocks. But we did find them. Yeah, that was good, that was good. And that was it for our 2017 travels, which moves us on to 2018, when I got my first chance to dip my toes into the waters of Europe. <laughs> Country number three. Which we only went in the airport, but it was a very cool airport and we were technically in the country, so we're gonna count it. And that is Qatar. <laughs> Huge did. airport, brand new at the time. And a giant teddy bear on display. We spent a while staring at him and walking from one end of the airport to the other mm. because Jesse thought I needed the exercise. Yeah, yeah good on you. <laughs> My only regret is not taking the monorail or the trains that are on the next floor up instead of just walking the whole place. They've got yeah, indoor train system there. We found out right near the end that I could have been taking the trains instead of walking from one end of the airport to the other. <laughs> anyway, then we hopped on our plane from Qatar into Europe to country number four. Belgium, the right. land, the land of fries and chocolate. Fritz. Beer. Oh my gosh, Fritz. <laughs> 
We had a very brief stop in Belgium, which is where we flew into, where Jesse's brother lives. Mm -hmm. Had a look around the famous Grand Place in the middle of Brussels, but we only had like a day or two there, and then we were going to come back to Belgium later. So we flew straight on to country number five, which was... Ireland! It's one of my favorite countries. How can you not love it? It's just fantastic. We popped into the Jamison Distillery, the fine Irish whiskey. Went to some pubs in the uh, Temple Bar area, like Sinji and Gogarty's. Yes, got a free hat. <laughs> <laughs> What happened to that hat? Do we still have it? Yeah, where is that hat? But yeah, check out Dana in the hat. It's so cool. Not to mention I love the music culture that still exists in Ireland. I feel like music is a little underappreciated in Australia, but it's still very much alive in Ireland. We popped into the oldest pub in Ireland. Oh, the Brazen Head. I was glad that they actually, not only was it the oldest, but it was still happening. There was different areas in there with people playing music. and Such a vibe and the old yeah. stone. Oh, I love it. We caught up with our friend Luke, who used to live in Australia and moved back to Ireland, so that was very fun. Went around with him and his family for a bit. We were lucky enough to catch a bird fight. The more hens. You two settle down, all right? They just go at it over there. <laughs> Pretty funny. And then we went on to our next country, which was country number six. England. England! Our first stop in England was Brighton. We flew to the airport that's near there. Yeah, that's in between London and Brighton. And hung out on the beach a bit. That's such a lovely beachfront in Brighton with the pier and all of the pebbles. And walked through all of the alleyways and shops. Saw a literal doggy in the window. <laughs> yeah. It was very cute. I didn't know if it was real at first, but it was real. And popped into Chucky Wocky Doo Da, the, the famous chocolate shop, which I think has since closed down. Yeah, that's the last thing we heard. Had a lovely hot chocolate there. Then we took a train all the way from Brighton to London, where we went to Selfridges. Yes, I found a gluten-free cake section in Selfridges, so I was stoked. Got, of course, the obligatory phone booth selfie that you have to get when you go to London. <laughs> we rode on a double-decker bus, saw fell in love with squirrels. Saw some good squirrels, yeah. Never had, I'd never seen them before. You probably hadn't either. No, I hadn't. Yeah. We don't have them in Australia, but they're so cute. I'm obsessed now. Did some of the touristy stuff, like went to the Tower Bridge, the Globe Theatre, the Camden Markets, saw Platform 9 and 3 quarters in King's Cross Station, <laughs> took a picture of somebody else trying to go through, not me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And popped into a cocktail place for a friend's party, which was very cool. It was called Alchemy, I think. Yeah, The Alchemist. Or The Alchemist, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Their cocktails were amazing. It was like theatre. So good. Yeah. And then we went on to our next country. Lucky number seven, Spain. Our place of choice in Spain was Barcelona this time around, and the only time so far. But Barcelona is, of course, famous for the Sagrada Familia, and we definitely went there, and we loved it. That's the king of all churches. We don't often pay to go inside things. We're more of a just walk around the streets and see what we can see kind of traveler, I suppose. But in this case, we just had to go inside. It was too impressive to not go inside. Mm -hmm. And the inside is amazing too. Yeah. The outside looks great. The inside is also amazing. The outside's good enough. We're very happy we paid to go in. They were still doing the construction of it, which is a labor of love and is probably still going, right? Yeah, been going for, I don't know, over a hundred years or so. A really long time. <laughs> and one of the guys who was doing the construction saw us filming him putting a block into place and gave us a big wave. <laughs> We were stoked. Yeah, what a legend. And we popped over to the, the beach near the W, had a bit of a chill there. My favorite memory of walking around Barcelona though is all of the alleyways that kind of seem like a rabbit's warren. You never quite know where you're gonna end up when you walk into them. And then they open out onto these really nice squares where you can sit and- Yeah, that's right. In a restaurant. After Spain came Italy and the Vatican, which would be countries eight and nine technically, since the Vatican is its own country. Small one at that. The world's smallest, in fact. And in Italy, we went to places such as... Rome. <laughs> of course Rome, where we saw all of the old buildings and ruins. Some of those buildings are extremely old. We popped into the Pantheon, which was... Completed in 125 AD. Pretty old. That one. Very old, but not as old as the Colosseum. The, oh yeah, the Colosseum completed in uh, 80, completed in 80 AD, the Colosseum. Wow. I remember it well. Do you? <laughs> and the Trevi Fountain, which is not nearly as old, but still yeah. old. Much uh, more modern, 1700 and... 62 is when it was finished. 1762. Old by some standards. <laughs> yes. All of them impressive, nonetheless. One of the favorite memories was, of course, when Jesse decided to chat up another bird on, yes, on the top yes. of one of the buildings. I remember it well. I mean, it was a feathered bird, not, not a woman bird, <laughs> so it's it okay. Might, it may have been a female. We don't know. Oh yeah, we went to that awesome uh, ice cream shop that you loved so much. Mm, I ordered myself a hot chocolate, which I thought was going to be a nice sugary hot chocolate. 
but it turned out it was just like pure 100% cocoa dark chocolate in a cup and Jesse ended up with that and I ended yeah. up with his ice cream. <laughs> I was okay with it. But they had a cool like chocolate fountain against the back wall that we very much enjoyed looking at. Mm. And we did the typical Italian thing of having some drinks whilst sitting on chairs facing out to the street. Uh, I believe it was my first Aperol Spritz. Ooh, your first one. Mm. Aren't they amazing? I thought it was a bit bitter at first, but I've come around to the joy of an Aperol Spritz now. <laughs> and then we had to fly out of Fiumicino, so we went and spent a night in Fiumicino, which is just outside Rome, really, where the airport is. Yeah, on the water. Had a little walk along the beach. The Med is right there. It's got little protected inlet pools. It's gotta go, what do you reckon? You gonna get in there? <laughs> and tried some mussels. And then yeah. it was on to the next country. Which was? Germany! Country number 10. So we actually did a road trip through Germany. We're driving to Germany, we're now in Germany, and we're maybe going to Switzerland. <laughs> Just on the left side of the car. But I'm on the right side of the road, shit. We're gonna go! We made a point of going down from Koblenz to Bingen, which I think is called the Romantic Rhine. And it was so pretty, driving along the Rhine River with all of the castle spotting. Yep. So many castles. And we didn't book any Ecom, we didn't have anything planned, we just knew we were going to drive the road. So anything that was super cute, we just stopped or, or stayed over at. <laughs> like we stopped in the little town of St. Gore, there was a huge castle overlooking the river and some cute little ducklings playing along <laughs> the side of the bank. Indeed. And we popped into Bacharach, mm. walked through the back streets there. It was such a cute little, what you would picture a tiny German town to look like, that's what it was. And then we found a hill out the back of it that we climbed up, there was some yeah. random and beers sitting up there. Yeah. And this, this we little, didn't drink them. Little chapel or church. One. Some beers for us on the doorstep over there. Some beers? Mm. For me? Oh my god. True. And the farming land across on the steep hills, who mm. knows how they do it. Uh, and then like, we, we stayed at a, a town called Trek. Dingshausen. Which was purely because when we looked up accommodation at last minute, we found some there. And um, yeah, we didn't do much else in that town, did we? We, we even drove backwards just to go back to Bacharach one more time. And we cruised through Baden Baden. Jesse had just done the Adams Family musical. He worked on that before we went over, and there was a line in that where they were like, Baden Baden. So we couldn't stop saying that the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Baden Baden. Uh, also a cute little town worth stopping at. It's got a little casino there too, which I think is still going. Yeah. We hit that up, didn't we? <laughs> no, no, no. And we saw, allegedly, the world's largest cuckoo clock. Though I have my doubts. It, it wasn't that big. Oh, it was pretty big. It could be the largest. Who are we to say? And then we cruised on over the border into Switzerland. What country number was that? 11, I believe. Country number 11, Switzerland. Ooh. Went through the tunnels and popped out with an awesome view of the Swiss Alps. Oh my yeah, gosh, the yeah, Swiss yeah. Alps. If there's one thing you need to see in your lifetime, it's Swiss Alps. Yeah, so we drove through Basel, through Bern, on the way to Interlaken area and ended up driving up the narrowest of little dirt lanes once we reached Grindelwald world to our accommodation which was fabulous we, we got a whole level of one of those wooden a Swiss um, ski chalet uh, yeah amazing ski chalets but not much money uh, we wouldn't be able to get that these days no. um, and yeah. it was underneath the Eiger mountain the tallest mountain yeah we could see the three big Eiger Monch and uh, Jungfrau it was an epic view from the balcony of our accommodation while we were in Grindelwald we went up the first cable car the famous thing to do when you're around Grindelwald is to go on the Jungfrau Jock the train that goes through the Jungfrau and up to the top but we reckon our secret little tip is to go on the first instead because you get a view of the Jungfrau from the first mm, definitely and cheaper than doing the train <laughs> that train is very expensive I mean the cable car is kind of expensive too but way better than the train and once you're at the top of the first there's actually a cliff walk there Diana's about to go on her first cliff walk adventure she's a bit scared <laughs> so I've got a dirty picture of a man falling off down here look at it epic bridge Donna's feeling really good about it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of heights. It was great. Only small, but um, yeah, as you can see, it was uh, amazing. The views are spectacular. They've got the little glass floored uh, viewing platform yeah. right at the end to look over and as if you're at the edge of the world, just looking at. So good. 
We fell in love with Switzerland. And also we headed over to Lauterbrunnen while we were there to the Trimmelback Falls, which is a waterfall that is inside a cave. So you oh. basically climb up a hill or you could have got a lift. We just didn't think the lift was working. So we walked the whole way up and found out afterwards <laughs> it was indeed working. Pretty chilly once you're in that cave. So, yes. so uh, take a jumper. Definitely. The temperature dropped dramatically, but it was so cool yeah, inside there. Lauterbrunnen's amazing because it's just a little town in, in between two humongous cliffs that just never end. Oh, and in Switzerland they have all these cows that wear bells, so if you pull over on the side of the road you can hear the cows walking around and the bells chiming. It's such a Switzerland thing. Mm. I, ho I hope the cows are okay with it, because uh, they've got some volume. <laughs> So then we left Switzerland and made our way back up to, our end goal was Belgium again, but yep. we ducked through a couple more countries on the way there. Mm, we swung a left after Basel this time and went through France. We did, stayed in Nancy. Nancy, we drove through Metz. We went on a little tourist train in the middle of town. So it's not a train, it's got it's, Yeah, it's not a real train. It's a, a people mover kind of yeah. thing. It's got wheels instead of tracks. Yeah, it's like seven bucks. Checked yeah. out the, the town of Metz and walked around Nancy for a bit and then kept on driving up towards Belgium, this time entering into Luxembourg. Oh yeah, that's right. That's very hilly. I remember walking over a bridge that is very high above the uh, the river beneath. It's a cute city. We were only there for a couple of hours. Yeah. Got a hot chocolate from a chocolate place. Had some chips at a market and then popped back in the car again. Worth going to. Then we made our way up into Belgium. We went to a little town called Denant. Yes, that's right. I did not remember. <laughs> Where Adolf Sax is from. So the saxophone was invented there. That's right. There were tiny little yeah, the saxophones, saxophones all along through the, the town. bridge that you drive over in the middle of town. It's got this lovely big stone cliff face again with a castle on top of it. And then we went back into Brussels. Yeah. To stay with Jesse's brother for a little bit. So now that we were back in Brussels for a little bit of time, I think we maybe had a weekish in Brussels the second time oh, around. Yeah, right. We decided to go a little more in depth in investigating Brussels. We jumped on the elevator to the sky, which instead of going up a massive hill to get to the top of a thing, they've just popped an elevator, an outdoor elevator that you can yeah. see out of and yeah, get yeah. a view as you ride. We walked through all the streets of Brussels, had some hot chocolate, saw a very creepy lady in the window of one of the stores. Indeed, yes, she's a bit odd. Just slowly like... What was she doing? <laughs> Baking or sewing? Or? I think she was knitting, knitting but it was knitting. very gumby knitting. We definitely enjoyed lots of frits with Andalus sauce. If mm. you're going to Belgium, definitely try the Andalus sauce. Yeah, it's the best. Mm. Went on Jude's tours. Yes, brother Jude showed us around. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Pointed out lots of the French language things to us, which I have studied some French, so I understood a bit, but he definitely understands more, having lived there for like 20 years now. Yeah. Pointed out different parks and that kind of thing. Yeah, this is the park of the Pit uh, Pit Sablon. And then we went into a supermarket and we were blown away by the selection of beers. It is just insane over there. They have so many good ones too and they're all accessible by the common folk. And then Jude's tours took us to some more Belgian towns like Leuven. Leuven. Fairy tale vibes. Yep. Castles that look like they belong in Disney. And then we went to Antwerp. We saw a cute little boy and dog sleeping under the bricks in the town square. Yeah, it's called boy and dog, I think. Oh, is it? <laughs> it's like it's the pavement thing. is overlaid over the top of it was really cool. The Antwerp Marathon or something was on, so there were bands playing in the streets and celebrations everywhere. It was mm. a happening place that day. We popped over to the river for a little bit, saw some of the cathedrals. Yeah, the cathedrals were amazing. And then we were on to our final country for that Europe trip, which was Denmark. And that was country number 14 for us. The yeah. city of Copenhagen, which we enjoyed walking around all of the water canal areas. And mm -hmm. I remember the weather being a little bit freezing and rainy one day. And we popped into Freetown Christiania, which tell us about Freetown. <laughs> yeah, it's this little commune of like a, a thousand people right in the center of the, of, of the city that's uh, been around since 71. And it's it's kind of autonomous, it's not policed as much as the rest of the place and uh, the laws are a little relaxed there. Yeah. yeah, the first time we went there on the bleak, dreary day, it felt almost scary to be there. Not that anyone <laughs> threatened us, but the vibe was just a little more intimidating. And then the second day we went there when it was sunny, everybody was out smoking. Plant life. Things that are legal in Christiania only. <laughs> what do you think of the place, Interesting. 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 
<laughs> yeah, and there was a bar there, so we got beers and yeah, just yeah, hung out with people. It was really happy, people. but you're not allowed to take any cam. Well, you're not allowed to film anything or take any photos in Christiania, so we have next to no footage from there. Mm -hmm. Just us walking in. That's but, about it. Yeah, just know that you can just walk in as long as you're not filming them. Mm -hmm. You are allowed to do what you want. No, not, <laughs> not that far. One of our favorite things while we were in Copenhagen was getting porridge. I'd never really had porridge in my life before that, but they do porridge very well, and they call it well. So we got our coffee collective. There it is. We had our gro, 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 grod, <laughs> porridge for breakfast. G R letter. We don't know. Yeah. D. We tried. And coffee collective, our favorite place to grab a coffee every day. Australians do really good coffee, and one of the things that we really missed in Europe was good coffee, which we found again in Denmark. We were so happy. They're very expensive. Danish currency was not kind with the currency conversion, so they ended up being like $9, nine. per coffee. Yeah, $9 Aussie. We're, we're flat white drinkers, so you know, we, we we don't really know too much about espresso, and I'm sure Italy absolutely kills it with espresso. Um, Tivoli? Yes, the Tivoli, Tivoli, the theme park in the middle of Copenhagen, which is yeah. so good. I think it's, you pay to get in, don't you? Yeah, you can pay to just get in, or you can pay to get in and do rides, and paying to just get in is much cheaper. And then you can pay for like one ride if you want to, which is what yeah. we did. And it's got like Disney vibes, there's this really white castle there with a fountain in front of it, peacocks running around everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had like a ballet show going on. We went on, they've got the world's oldest wooden roller coaster there, I think. Oh, so yeah, we went on that right. as well. That was our one ride. <laughs> then we hopped on a plane back home. Yeah, that was the last city of that trip. That's right. That was 2018, my first big European adventure. Not Jesse's, but our first together. That was my fourth European trip, that one. Anyway, that concludes today's video. We'll head on into 2019 in the next one, which was another big epic European adventure, but not the same places. All new places, I think. If you'd like to see more videos from us, please subscribe, like this video, give us a comment on your favorite place that you've been, and maybe your favorite place that we've been that you liked from this mm, video. Mm, mm. And we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Not our first trips overseas, but or well, maybe it was yours. It was mine. <laughs> Look at it. A modern marvel. Although it's not modern. It's an old marvel. Made from marvel. Like made from a marvel made from marvel. So once the dream was over for us in Switzerland. Okay, that's a bit dramatic. Both of his previous girlfriends. <laughs> I mean Jesse never had a girlfriend before me. Right?